everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell with news and views from the Nefarium on Thursday, June 23rd, 2022. Uh, I have to tell you, today's news, this story is wrong on so many levels. Uh, before we get to that, let's do the house cleaning. Don't forget, tomorrow we have the vid chat that will be at 3 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Please, please get all of your comments and questions posted no later than 10 p.m. this evening on the website. And uh, I have encountered a couple of comments and questions from last time that for some reason were in the moderation column and that I did not see. So whoever sent that, please resend it um, and we'll try and get it taken care of tonight. So that's 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. That's uh, U.S. Central Time. Get your comments and questions posted no later than 10 o'clock tonight. Now, this story is so wrong on so many levels. I want to prep you briefly for the story. I'm going to read the whole thing because it's that important. But I want you to listen carefully to the propaganda in it. And I want you to listen carefully between the lines because somebody here is playing around with fire, and I mean that quite literally. So the headline here is Putin Colonel Vadim Zemin, who carried the Russian president's nuclear codes, is found dead at home. And here's the article. After leaving his position as an officer in the security services, the mysterious Vadim Zemin, who is 53 years old, is being investigated for allegedly accepting bribes in his new job in the customs service. Zemin is a former colonel from the Federal Security Service during his time in the FSS. Um, he was in charge of the briefcase that carries the Russian nuclear controls and that is always carried by the head of the Kremlin. It is well known that he served in this capacity as an advisor to the previous president of Russia, Boris Yeltsin. Zemin remained in the security agency when his predecessor, Vladimir Putin, was replaced, advancing through the ranks to become a colonel. However, the specifics of his work are not quite apparent, and there is just one image of Zemin. In the kitchen of his apartment in Krasnogorsk, which is located in the Moscow region, he was discovered dead from gunshot wounds. Zemin, who was discovered by his brother, who according to reports had been hiding in the bathroom during the shooting that took place on Monday. He was injured in the head and was laying in a pool of blood, a pistol marked IZH79-9TM was lying nearby. At the time, his common-law wife, who worked as a medical professional, was away tending to wounded soldiers who had been affected by Putin's conflict in the Ukraine. <coughs> According to Moskovsky Komsomolovitz, the incident took place while Zemin was in the subject was the subject of a criminal investigation for the alleged accepting of bribes after being promoted to a prominent job within the Customs Department. It is believed that the launch system for the Kremlin's strategic missiles is concealed within the mysterious briefcase. The bag, which has a unique key code and is generally monitored 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and controls every aspect of Moscow's nuclear arsenal. It is said to be overseen by an armed security officer who travels with Putin wherever he goes and watches over him at all times. The Russian word for briefcase is Chaget, and its development began in the early 1980s. In 2019, the case was shown to the rest of the world for the first time, and its contents were broadcast live on television. It's uh, well knowledge, sorry about the diction here, folks, but I'm, I'm reading the article. It's well knowledge that Putin likes to poke fun at the West by insisting 
that the officer who carries the nuclear codes is visible beside him. This took place in April in Moscow when he was attending the burial of ultra-nationalist leader Vladimir Zhirinovsky. The unsettling appearance of a high-ranking military commander carrying a briefcase has prompted speculation that Vladimir Putin, who has been accused of engaging in aggressive behavior, may be preparing to use lethal nuclear weapons. According to the media in the area, despite the fact that the case is frequently shown as being held by an advisor who is there beside Putin, there are, in fact, not just one, but three in total. Every one of these can be reached by the three officials in the Russian Federation who hold the highest ranks. According to the investigators, the most peculiar feature of the case is the launch button, which, according pardon me, which, contrary to popular belief, is white rather than the more traditional color of red. And, unquote, that's the end of the article. Now, I don't need to tell you that there's a lot of propaganda going on in here, including Mr. Putin's conflict in the Ukraine. Well, unfortunately, folks, the West is as guilty in that affair as is Mr. Putin. And uh, the idea that Russia is going to launch nuclear weapons. Well, Russia has been warning us that's true, but usually in response to some sort of provocation. What gets me here is the implication of several possible stories here in the background, not the least of which is that the man who was one of the officers in charge of Russia's nuclear football for the president of the Russian Federation, Mr. Putin himself, subsequently supposedly obtained a high-ranking job in Russian customs and had been accepting bribes. Now, what that tells me is that there was smuggling going on either out of or into, and possibly both, into Russia, and that this man was aware of it, and whatever was being smuggled may have been extremely sensitive indeed, and I would go so far as to say possibly even something nuclear, a suitcase nuke, because our own media has been pumping up this narrative of Russian false flags involving nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons, and uh, in reality we're the ones that have been caught with our pants down. So something involving smuggling. I'm not suggesting that it's confined to that uh, nuclear possibility. It may be something else, but in any case, we're dealing with something that could be and apparently might be taken as a national security issue for Russia. Now, the other thing here to notice is this very strange assertion that Mr. Putin likes to be photographed with whoever is carrying his version of the three Russian nuclear footballs, likes to be photographed with the person carrying it. And I'll read that part again. Um, the unsettling appearance of a high-ranking military commander carrying a briefcase has prompted speculation that Vladimir Putin, who has been accused of engaging in aggressive behavior, may be preparing to use nuclear weapons, and then earlier it states it's well knowledge, and again, that's poor diction, but I'm simply reading the article as is. It's well known, is what I think they mean to say, that Putin likes to poke fun at the West by insisting that the officer who carries the nuclear codes is visible beside him. Now, there is a clear message there, because as you know, I have entertained this idea that the American nuclear football may not be under the control of Mr. Biden. Mr. Biden is a corrupt, venal, evil, and, uh, as far as I'm concerned, mentally ill man. And I, it, it beggars belief to me that they would allow such a man to have control, particularly with his communist Chinese connections, that they would allow this man to have any sort of proximity to the nuclear football. In other words, I've been suggesting that there is a bit of a muddle in the chain of command going on right now because of the corruption and incompetence of this misadministration. 
So the real message here is, apparently, we have control of our nuclear weapons. And if that's the case, then why assassinate a former carrier of one of these Russian nuclear footballs? Again, I'm arguing that this may be a very, very potent message, but the question is, who's the message from, to whom is it directed, and what exactly is the message? Um, I do think that this story, particularly that one comment about Putin poking fun at the West, um, I don't think that's necessarily poking fun. I think it's really questioning who's in control of the really important stuff. And this may be one of the reasons why foreign powers are not supposedly taking the phone calls from President Brandon Nenko. Uh, why would you want to talk to someone like that? So there's a very serious situation going on inside of Russia. The other possibility is maybe this is a signal that there is indeed a covert operation underway in that country to uh, change the government, to send messages to the, to the Russian government. Who knows? But there is so much wrong with this article. There's a lot of stuff that I, I just feel in my bones is swirling around in the background here that we're not being told. But it's enough to note that this Colonel Vadim Zemin is someone who was responsible for keeping the nuclear football for the president of the Russian Federation. And folks, that's a huge, huge nuclear football. Uh, just no two ways about it. So that's it for our news and views for the day. This is a story to watch. Uh, and please, if any of you find out any more information, please email it to me. Uh, I'd be very grateful for that because I have a feeling we're looking at something very serious here. So that's it. Don't forget we have tomorrow the vid chat at 3 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Oh, there goes the K9 Home Security Alert Service. <laughs> but, and uh, don't forget, I, I will want the questions in by 10 o'clock U.S. Central Time tonight uh, so that I can go through them and print them out. Anyway, that's it for our news and views of the day. We'll see you on the flip side, everybody. Bye-bye, and God bless.